You know, it's like if you go up a creek and fish the same exact rig every single time, you're like, man, I've done so good here before. Like, what's wrong? It's like, well, <laughs> fish are probably used to it. They probably know what's up. Finally you know, you got to change your yeah. tactics. I see a lot of people in the industry, they, they find something that works and they stay there forever. And they don't change their ways. They don't change what they do, how they fish, how they guide, whatever it may be. And that can be a fatal flaw in fly fishing. All right, guys. Welcome back to another Wildfly podcast. We had another episode. First one ever in the shop. We're here at, uh, at the Due South Outfitters Fly Shop in Boone, North Carolina. A little after hours action. Oh, yeah. I am uh, the only one here at the table without a vice, so I'm going to feel a little left out here. It's a little <laughs> weird, dude. It's a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> but I get a, I just get to take notes and watch you guys tie the whole time. Yeah. yeah. But we've got three of the guides here, D South, three of my buddies. we got Carson Decker. You guys know him from the podcast. He's been on, what up? Been on here before. we got Paco. How's it going? And then we got Shane. You guys... Uh, if y'all been following along for a while, Shane is uh, Shane and I've been buddies since high school and fish and all that, and he's been some in some of the OG wildfly videos. So, damn right, damn right. <laughs> and he's broken a few more rods before. Never so forget we, we your roots, it. baby. <laughs> Don't forget where you came from. Homegrown. Oh, um, you want to get that a little closer? Yeah. Trying to teach these boys how to keep these mics going and just sing on tie at the same time. So we'll see what happens. But uh, this last week, or the last couple of days, I uh, just came up here, and uh, Paco, Shane, and I filmed a video and did some uh, some local creek fishing. Yeah, man. And how, how, how was it, boys? What happened? It was great, yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 we went, uh, we explored some new streams uh, the past two afternoons, and um, were able to get a good evening bite. Uh, yesterday was actually really good, but um, a lot of dry fly eats right now, a lot of... Uh, a lot of small midges and keeping it real light and light and loose, I guess you could say. Light and loose, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, me and you got to get out this extra morning, this morning. I mean, we had an awesome day, too. Yeah. I mean, kind of the same story as yesterday. Found that really good dry fly bite and kind of stuck with it. But. Yeah. Yeah. We part, part of what we want to talk about today is, uh, like, just summer fishing. These guys are up here doing a bunch of trips uh, pretty frequently and like obviously when it gets hot it gets pretty tricky to uh to find some fish sometimes so this i guess this last trip would be fun to talk about um as like a good example kind of like what summer fishing is and like how it's been going on right now um because i think one of the main things that we've taken away it's just been the it like the last two days we started at what like 1 2 p.m yeah and it's just so freaking hot but then, like, 7 o'clock comes around, like, 6.37 when that sun goes down, and it just, like, turns on. It's that late Absolutely. bite. It's good. Yeah, it's really that late good. bite. Mm-hmm. So I think that's definitely a key takeaway for the, the summer. But, like, what's what's it been like for you guys on trips, um, and how are you guys lining up your trips for, uh, like, local stuff here? Yeah, I mean, being able to get out there early has made all the difference for us. Um, at least early on, we were trying to meet our trips at 6, 6.30. Um, and, I mean... As soon as that sun gets up, we're starting to struggle. So, I mean, just getting, I mean, that extra kind of jump on those fish has been awesome. I mean, yeah. it's all. The, the biggest recommendation for any, like, summertime fishing has to be trying to find wild streams. All of your big, you know, delayed harvest or uh, hatchery-supported streams, you know, they're, those are going to be the, the streams that have already been, you know, hit pretty hard. All those fish have been kind of ripped out of there, but but your wild streams up in the the more shaded areas are are going to be fishing a lot a lot better for you. And um, it's a, it's really technical and it's hard summertime, you know, getting in there. But you know, we can we've started to take a lot more more of our trips out on on a few local wild streams around here, and they, they've been paying off. Uh, I feel like the 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 big thing is just like. <coughs> It's got to be high elevation and looking for shade, yeah. looking for a lot of elevation drop or elevation gain, elevation. Because um, I think, like, we fished that first day on, like, more of a typical river and that's a little bit flatter. Yeah. And it was a little slow. <laughs> you yeah, know very, what I mean? Very <laughs> slow. The fish were not quite in there. They're definitely moving up to the tributaries right now. Yeah. yeah Carson, water- Carson hadn't been fishing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on IR. We've been on injury reserve for a little while. I uh, 
on a guided trip, I slipped in the river and tore my ACL and my meniscus. Um, I'm just tired of tired of it, man. I don't <laughs> I don't recommend it. It's like really it takes you away from fishing completely. So if you like fishing, don't tear your ACL. Um, so I haven't been in the river as much, in the creek as much, but I've really been focusing on tailwater stuff because I'm able to be in a drift boat. Um, but I still keep up with, you know, Paco and Shane and, you know, some of our other guys, Drayton or Travis, fishing locally um, to, you know, see what's going on locally and always kind of be in the know. Um, you know, when it comes to the Boone area and everything, you know, living here and being raised here, the creeks and everything around here, it's tough to – you know, not really know about it and text your buddies and see, you know, how the fishing is in the morning or the afternoon. Um, and like these guys have said, the early, early, early morning, especially as we get further out into the summer and uh, the late, like the latest part of the evening, like right where you are essentially are like, ah, I can't barely see my fly anymore. That's Literally when, last night. That's when <laughs> yeah, the fishing last night. turns on. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but but along with that right you can still if you if you get out there here and fish locally on like more of a uh i guess like a overcast or even a rainy day if it's just drizzling rather than like pouring obviously you don't want the rivers to be blown out but if you get out there on an overcast day you can still catch fish throughout the day and you you Mm -hmm. can catch fish one two o'clock we just are kind of recommending you avoid it during the summer um, and it's it's even hard on the fish that you pull out trying to, you know, revive them and get them, you know, kicking again. Sometimes it can uh, it can have a real effect on them if you're you're pulling them out in the heat of the day. It just stresses them out too much. Mm-hmm. It just stresses them a ton in yeah. the hot yeah. water. So it's kind of a respect thing to not be hammering fish about 1, 2 o'clock when it's about 85 degrees out. Because y'all start, like, or y'all stop booking, like, full day uh local trips right like in, oh, during yeah. the summer it's yeah. tough yeah yeah i wouldn't want to simply because it's not worth people's money to be fishing for that extra four hours meaning after 12 o'clock or after 12 31 o'clock yeah. and you know you tell a beginner that who has never fly fished before in their life and even they'll notice it they'll tell you like wow we were getting a ton of bites this morning but like no kind of just quit yeah off. so you know that <laughs> between i'd say 12 and six o'clock 12 and five o'clock like shane said you can still catch them but it's kind of be going to be a thing where it's like man i've really caught fish here in the past and i'm not getting bites you know it's kind of weird so gotta let that sun get low again into the afternoon yeah i think sure. something that you're saying shane uh with like rainy days and cloudy days because <laughs> paco and i were talking about this and um I know I like I love to do I love like small stream streamer fishing yeah. which can be really fun mm-hmm. and a lot of these smaller creeks around here it's pretty bu- it's pretty wild like some of the fish that'll come out and uh, like how big some of them are yeah. in such a small creek but like recently I went out when it was raining like right as it was raining the water had been up and like the streamer bite was like hot dude like, yeah. it was almost every hole we were getting some to move um, we we're getting some to eat and I think like if if there's a day that's like cloudy rainy it's like dude bring a little five weight six weight yeah. and a seven weight and um if you have like a poly leader or even or a sink tip and just toss that in and do the streamer bike can be really hot in the summer yeah, yeah. another another kind of reason fishing's been tough lately is um for those of you who as it's raining outside, yeah, it's pouring. <laughs> pouring. It's That's pouring funny. right now. Um, Water's actually, good. We've been lacking on rain around need here. It. Yeah, we, we need it. Um, <laughs> we need it bad. So bring it. That's why, for the most part, on a clear, sunny day, if it hasn't rained in a while, it's going to be just crystal clear. The fish are going to see you coming up unless you're just crawling through a little yeah. stream, right? But um, the the pressure, it, as the water comes up, the, the pressure kind of starts to subsidize and fishing gets better. But um, really with our... I forgot. I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> with with uh, probably just saying like the like with the clear clear water and like sneaking up on fish. It's like yeah. the yeah. water's low, so it's, you're gonna have to make longer casts yeah. potentially. Oh yeah. Like when we were dry fly fishing earlier. I mean, we got to that flat and there was I mean probably eight fish rising consistently. But oh, yeah. we struggled. We got the eats, but I mean, good casts were put up those fish. I mean, we're still not. Yeah, I mean, we even added a little bit of like an extra bit to our leader yeah. like of what like 5x 6x yeah another Sent. four feet <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly what what i was going to say about um you know your your wild streams and being able to 
to kind of fish in summertime <coughs> when when we get a lot of rain you know in a short period of time and like the all the streams seem you know watauga river and all the main streams seem super blown out that's typically the time to go try a wild stream because that water level is about a foot or two higher than it typically is and the the fish will actually spread out more and yeah. you can right you can start fishing different pockets that you didn't even know were were there before yep. um sometimes that's that's the best fishing is right after a storm or a day after right Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not to where it's dangerously high, but um, yeah, you don't want to be fishing in the mud. Nah, never. Yeah. But those lo- those those wild trout streams fish well after a storm. Yeah, sure. and I, touching on that, I've really learned it like the past couple years. Trout are seriously affected by barometric pressure. They really yes. are. So like essentially storms. Yeah. So it's like when there is a storm moving in or a storm moving out, those fish are going to be acting in some way. You know they're. I have found they're either going to be lock jawed, they're really not going to eat, they're just going to sit there and just kind of lock their jaw, you know, or they're really going to eat really well. You know, it's like if you're risking it and you're fishing right before a storm's going to hit, sometimes that can be like the craziest fishing. Risk it for the biscuit, right? Right? Today. Risk it for the biscuit. Today. Yeah. Yeah. We got to our last hole of the day, um, and I mean, we were trying to make some cool stuff happen for the end of the video, and I mean, right as it was about to dump on us, we hooked, what, like four or five fish and probably... Yeah. I mean, five minutes. Yeah, not even to mention the six or seven that we missed. <laughs> yeah, as well. yeah, those hurt, but those stay <laughs> off the record. Yeah, those stay off the record. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll probably make the video though. Yeah. <laughs> Blooper reel. I actually do like seeing the river though when it's low, because yeah. I think when you go back, like, like you kind of when you see it low, it's like bone dry, right? So you get to at least see like where the holes are, where the yeah. rocks are. Yeah, that's cool. And then when you go back when it's up you kind of know the holes and it's not yeah. just like you're looking into like a, oh yeah just some it, random yeah. run. it helps you str- it helps you strategically like move through the stream right yeah mm-hmm. so then you don't walk over the stuff you want to fish and stuff like that it's a good point dude they were sitting in some skinny stuff this week like yeah. shane one of those like one of those fish you caught at the end of the day yesterday yeah, dude that's cool yeah. teeny tiny water yeah. um yeah the pocket it was <laughs> it was out of pocket right never yeah. we, none of us really thought we'd uh pull a fish out of this this little teeny tiny run it only you know what drifted out about a foot and a half yeah <laughs> and uh ended up pulling i don't even know the length of it but one of the better a, fish yeah a better fish of the day pretty pretty uh healthy wild brown out of that stream had some good color on them yeah real light color which yeah. is like not as rich yellow but like this lighter kind of faint yellow which is kind of i don't see a lot around here it was cool yeah, I don't know what that means. Exactly. It, was a, it was a better contrast between the the belly of the fish and the uh, the red spots on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you guys say is like kind of transitioning from spring? I guess we've kind of already transitioned, but like, what, what's like the biggest thing that you switch up from like spring fishing? Then when you start getting into like now the summer, like the heat of the summer. I, mean, I would say, I mean, the size of the flies I'm fishing. I mean, big yeah. time. Like. I mean, when we're fishing those DH fish, we can get away with throwing some pretty fun stuff. I mean, big hooks, big beads. Um, I mean, at least on my trips, I've been trying to keep stuff small and light recently, and that seems like it's been doing the trick. Um, but, I mean, that, like, size 14 Frenchie that might have smoked them in March is not going to do anything right now. But Downsize for success. Yeah. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, a big thing I switched up on my trips is um, the depth of my flies. So, like, in general... Most of your, the, the trout in summertime are going to be looking up for dry flies, right? So if they're already looking up constantly, then, then you don't really have to be running the bottom in every single hole. So kind of keeping it, keeping it shallow, about two, yeah. a foot and a half, two feet on some streams, depending on the wild stream, but keeping it all really, like you said, you know, light and shallow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's key. Even in, uh, when we were in the tailwaters, when I fished with Max recently, we were doing that same thing. Yeah. I was like, are you sure this is deep enough? He's like, dude, it's summertime. Like, they're they're in yeah. the upper to middle part of the water column. They're not – I mean, there's fish that are going to be sitting deep, but you don't need to be, like, scraping bottom. Yeah, no, I'm serious. I mean, hopefully they can't see what we're tying, but if they can, I mean, we're not lying. Keep them small and light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah what, right. are, what are we working on over here, boys, <laughs> without giving away too many secrets? Um, I only fish dry flies. <laughs> <laughs> are you so. just dying dry? I am tying dry flies. Um, I have, uh, is it showing that I don't fish much anymore? <laughs> I tie dries now. You got a lot of time on your hands now. Yeah, no, I'm just tying little, like, sulfur dries for the South Holston. Um, the two tailwaters in Tennessee have had a lot of, lot of sulfur action. Um, in the afternoons, there's a lot of, you know, 
you could basically go anywhere in the afternoon on those rivers and there's a lot of sulfur dry flies opportunities um and locally so you know i can get out and get around the sides of creeks and all and hang out with these guys and um something i've seen there's there's been a lot of sulfurs coming off on the little creeks again right in the latest part of the evening so um you know a lot of times people will come into our shop and they're like hey you know what's the hatch what's going on like what's happening on the creeks and as a shop employee and as someone who fishes here it's not frustrating but it's like you know there's no real hatch like it's not like oh Sulfurs are coming at 5.15 this afternoon. Mother you know, Christian like, it's, it's, <laughs> changes, yeah. changes daily, right? Yeah, exactly. It changes. I mean, it's all the time. You know, you're going to get a plethora of bugs each evening when they're there, you know? So you might, on a random evening, you might see some oh, yellow cool. sallies this time of year. You might see some sulfurs mixed in with it. You might yeah. see some darker mayflies, you know, Cahills, stuff like that. Hendrickson's. He's seen some Hendrickson's. Those are cool. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of tough to be like, you know, this bug is coming off at this exact time. Mm -hmm. So I like to fish, you know, a blanket pattern fly, right? Something that's going to imitate a bunch of different stuff. Yeah. So stimulator. Yeah. That's what we were doing today. We were fishing that light stimulator. It's got the stone fly. I mean, that yellow Sally is going to be a pretty close match. I mean. Sulfur we fish. saw those sulfur. Yeah, we saw a couple caddis. sulfur, like a bunch of sulfur today. But we also yeah. saw some in like a spider web. Yeah, they were like it was cool. It was like perfectly it was just, like, frozen. like yeah, it was cool. like frozen. Yeah. It was wild. Poor guy. Poor yeah. guy. He became. He, long he fish. took an L, but yeah. pretty cool to see. <laughs> so it's like if you're trying to catch like sulfur fish or you're trying to catch yeah. fish on Hendrickson's, it's like they might not be there. You know, they might there might be one here and might be one there. So it's like throw blanket patterns. Throw you know like a parachute Adams. My God, that imitates oh, yeah. like Firefly. almost every yeah. single bug ever. And then just switch up you color, know? switch up size. Mm-hmm. And so know. if the fish are only eating your dropper, maybe they don't want dries. Maybe there's not going to be a hatch that evening, but it can yeah. change immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, there there definitely are bugs coming off on the creeks, though, which is really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what, do you, what would you say, like, someone who comes into the shop and is asking, like, about, you know, what should I be fishing in this area? Where, like, what should I be doing? Like, what, what do you think they should be having? Like, what should they keep in their box you know because i think it's important to kind of there's not like one thing that's just going off like what what would you guys say to them i mean in general i typically no matter what the wild stream and unless there's a hatch and they're solely eating dry flies only i'll always have a dropper right but summertime i switch it up and you know normally you can be fishing two droppers at a time but um i'll fish a dry fly and then throw one really light like a 20 or 22 size midge kind of trailing it only a few inches down in the water and um i don't normally do the trick and just maybe you know switching out your dry every now and again but also switching out that that bottom fly Mm -hmm. um pretty frequently if you're not getting bites yeah we were doing almost an emerger today yeah like off of that stimulator yeah we were seeing some fish that looked like they were still eating on the surface but we weren't seeing any heads or anything um didn't really do much for us, yeah. but yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> it, it, that exact but setup has you never I mean, know. Yeah, Try it. but I, we also didn't switch it up. We only fished it for a little bit, and we like, I think if we would have messed around with it a little bit, we could have probably gotten something. Oh yeah, because they yeah. were definitely sitting up. Yeah, I mean that same setup has done some serious damage on some local water around here, but yeah. So how about like like nymphs during the summer? Like what sort of like colors? What sort of like, you know, hook size, beat sizes? Like what what do you guys typically? What's been kind of doing well for y'all? Keep it simple. Yeah. The biggest tip ever for summer fishing, keep it simple. Yeah. There's no need to throw like a really big fly that's looks really cool and has a ton of cool colors on it and stuff like that. Like you put a hook with thread on it and they will eat it in a creek, essentially a midge. Yeah. So like we've been saying, you know, long and light or, you know, light flies, light tippet moving into the summertime the bugs like really aren't huge they're not big and the fish don't have a big appetite yeah so they're they don't really want to sit there and move for a big girdle bug or move for a big soft tackle fly or something like that you know for example <laughs> hey, they'll, they'll eat the girdle the girdle right. bug <laughs> always works <laughs> love hate relationship with the girdie <laughs> moving on a fish is gonna you know more willingly eat a midge smaller stuff like i said just thread on a hook keep it simple very simple nymphs that's you know hitting them in the face all day long you know versus you know moving way off their line to grab something so yeah, yeah. Um, but seriously keep it simple it's a really good thing to live by in mm-hmm. the summer 
And I, I think, like, what, what do you guys, like, tip it wise, what do you guys think? Like, what has oh. been. 6X fluoro. Yeah. Yeah. Have you or guys six you've been going down to 6X? Yeah. Or 6 and a half. Learn on yeah. 6X and you'll be fine. Yeah. 7X yeah. gets bites, but it does break. <laughs> six and a half is the sweet spot. Yeah. The floral flex. 7X yeah. is super strong. Oh. <laughs> 7X is not yeah. in my vocabulary. 7X yeah. yeah. is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the birds. It's for the. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, another cool thing I wanted to talk about because this is uh, a pretty rare event for us. Um, but this summer in the spring, we've had the, the Brood X cicada hatch, which has been pretty wild. And I only have gotten to fish one day for them. But I would love to hear from you guys a little bit of your experience fishing them. Yeah. And uh, maybe if you have any cool stories from in any crazy eats you yeah. want to talk about yeah well pa- paco and i we we went out one day um and tried the cicada hatch and we fished kind of the lower wataga more like trophy section because they were real you know active out there and um i think the biggest thing we learned from it and even matt max and i were also talking about it is that the cicadas are so big that after after a trout eats one, it almost takes them five to ten minutes to just crunch down on it before they'll eat again. So like if you see one rip rip one out of the water, you know you're you don't cast right at him because he probably won't eat it for a few minutes and you'll get frustrated, right? So you kind of just had to keep going and it's like luck of the draw, right? Of they they picked yeah. you, but we kind of hit hit it yeah. a little late, right? Yeah, it wasn't full in effect when we got out there. I had my cicada fish. He was not the giant wild brown on the door. He was a it's a sizable brooder. Yeah, but a good brooder. Yeah, yeah, they're all so fat. Brooder lives. Yeah. Yeah. Our fish, they're fish, too. Brooders are, are <laughs> fish, too. <laughs> Those are good fish, though. Those all right, are well, 21. Before we get too into that, Carson, you want to explain a little bit for people who maybe don't aren't familiar with the cicada hatch and maybe explain, like, what that is and yeah. how rare it is? Yeah, from, like, top, like yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, so um, there's cicadas every summer, right? I mean, they're everywhere. But this year was the, you know— Brood X cicadas, so I guess you'd say a different, you know, kind strand, of cicadas, right? different yeah. strand, right? So yeah, so um, they're these big black and orange bugs. I mean, they're like free protein for a trout, and a lot of it. So once every 17 years, these Brood X cicadas, you know, decide to come out of the ground randomly. <coughs> I think it's kind of crazy. It's they crazy. decide to come out of the ground, go cranking up a tree, and then just die and get eaten by a trout. You yeah. know, what Wait, a life! Don't right? they come out? Of the water or is it the ground? No, no they, they live in the ground. Wow. They it's live in the ground. Cicada, yeah. It's a cicada nymph. It's yeah. just like a yeah. black <laughs> ball. <laughs> yeah, dude. They live in the ground, then they go f- up to a tree, make a ton of noise, yeah. find, a, find a lady, and then die. Yeah. yeah those, those bugs are two years younger than I am. And I mean, it's something just watching one just topple out of a tree and just get smoked. Yeah. Just, he's done. What a life, man. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so, you know. I heard from a lot of these older guides that, you know, because when I first heard about the, you know, the cicada hatch or the cicada event, I kind of just pushed it off. I was like, oh, that kind of just sounds like an old, you know, myth or something like that. But I mean, it really did. It happened. Um, And it was like Paco said, it was centered on the lower Watauga tailwater. Now, like Western North Carolina was in the zone for it, but we really just, they weren't here. Like, you know, we would you would know it if they were here. Yeah. Um, sure. Down on that lower section of the Watauga, it was like deafening how loud those things were. Um, kind of like white noise in the background. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. But so yeah, those those cicadas they were out there, and the fish knew to eat them. I mean, they kind of knew what was up. Yeah. Um, and they'd fall out of the trees. And kind of the key to it was, you know, as you're fishing and as you're floating down, yeah, there's going to be trout that are rising, coming up, you know, poking their heads up and sipping and all that jazz. But when they ate a cicada i mean it was kind of like a like a toilet bowl like a whoosh you know like loud like someone sunk a bowling ball in the water really fast kind of startled you um and that would be a cicada eat so then in that situation like shane said you don't want to toss it right on him because you know he just ate a five course meal he's crunching down man yeah he just (laughs) ate like the equivalents of like 500 midges at once (laughs) and so or like two big macs yeah Yeah, right (laughs) yeah dude and uh, so you kind of row a lap, go up around him, and then, you know, toss that cicada on him. And, man, I didn't get out there a ton during it, um, but I definitely did have my share of it. Um, and, I mean, it was, it was exhilarating. It was some of the craziest fishing I've ever done in my life where the fish, they don't sip it. They don't, you know, 
try to barely eat it. I mean, they tomahawk themselves <laughs> at that big foam fly. Like they will fly out of the water for it, and it's it's unbelievable. It was really really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you missed it, uh, seventeen years, man. Yeah. You can have 20, yeah. <laughs> Twenty thirty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm good. You Easy good? There. Yeah. yeah, we good. <laughs> Flies. Not bad. Edit that out. <laughs> well, you need to just go to like go out west, and it's like a cicada hatch all the time. <laughs> I heard. Three X and girdle bugs. <laughs> yeah, that's an easy dude. Coast it boy was right there. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not it's like it's not like we don't fish big bugs very frequently. Like yeah. you'll fish like the chubby, you know, yeah. the, the dry dropper up in yeah. Tennessee, yeah. but it's not, it's pretty much just like your indicator and here and there you'll get a, an eat, but it's just like, Oh yeah. But dude, the cicadas were epic. Yeah. They were really cool. And like, what was the really cool part is like the fish that you caught on the cicadas weren't small. Yeah. No. Yeah. Pretty like <laughs> I'd say 99% of the time, every fish that came up to eat it was at the bare minimum 17 inches long. Yeah. But it was like, you know, Max come back like, oh, I caught two 23s today on skaters. It's yeah. like, wow, that's nice. Or they'd be like <laughs> 15 in like a football. Yeah, <laughs> because they've been eating those. You know, I saw a guy, he just posted a story and he was like, you know, a really fat brown. And uh, he was like, you know, back on midges, but they got that cicada belly. <laughs> that cicada <laughs> I mean, belly. they literally, yeah. this fish was like yay long, but had like a couple grapefruits in yeah. there. It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So um, when we when we did it, cool. we did it on like Father's Day, and we um, we were finding that they were really tucked up close to the bank. Yeah. Like most of the skate eats were not just like in the middle. <coughs> like I had a, we had a few towards the end of the day. So they're falling just, right up out of the trees. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They were in the riffles, but um, yeah, for the most part, like I remember the first one I caught, we like like you guys are saying, it just freaking bowling ball hit yeah. the water. I'm like, oh my god. Oh, they, <laughs> that's insane the one that scares you like it literally yeah. startled and you yeah. see it too like they like throw water and everything yeah, yeah you kind of got to give it the beans too yeah i mean none of that like eh, you know i mean yeah but we were like we were sight fishing from above like we we anchored up we were, we were sight fishing it casting down casting down yeah. and then we just like switched our angle and we we're basically just like horizontal to it and uh just like casted pretty much right upstream and like straight across and dude they just destroyed it yeah yeah and it was it was it was a hoot, man. I, yeah, I they, I, I can't wait to do it again. They did get scared of cicadas because like, one person said cicada, and like every single person in the world with a drift boat went down there like, throwing cicadas. Because I mean, it was really cool. Yeah. So I mean, they had every right, you know. I mean, it was really really cool. But then it, it got to the point where like this beautiful brood X cicada just falls out of a tree and it's just sitting there fluttering <laughs> like a real one. Like, like, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw fish come up and refuse real cicadas. <laughs> like they'd come up and they're like, ah, it looks too good. Yeah. And they like would turn away and it's like, you know, you're sitting there with your big old chunk of foam. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Yeah. You know? so, yeah. I mean, it was, it's like that. It's cool. Man. Out West for the, like the salmon flies and you know, the, the hoppers and stuff like Right away when the salmon flies start popping off, you, like if you get there the first couple of days it's going off, uh, it's it's bonkers. Couldn't be better. Yeah. But like I, I've hit it before where it's like after. Yeah, the bugs are like, there. It, yeah. People have hit it. It's, it's just like what happens. So that's what yeah. happened with, like people were really quiet about the cicadas on social people media. Help. <laughs> yeah, you hold your pictures. You wait to post them until the cicadas <laughs> are done. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So guess. now now we now we're talking about the cicadas. Because it's kind of over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. No shame. <laughs> That's how it works. Twenty thirty eight. You guys got to float it a good bit though, right? I got two days in on the cicada fish. Um, but I mean, that one day we had, I really we had kept, a good day. Though, yeah, though. we had a kick ass day. Yeah, it was fun. We snipped the. I snipped my nymphs off pretty quickly. Yeah. When I we we saw one. No, no like, need, yeah, right? No, no I'm not throwing a nymph today. And I mean, that, at least the one I caught, he was. I mean, I think I missed him three times. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> we sat at this, anchored up at this one hole, and Paco was thrown at him for probably an hour, hour and a half before he finally landed him. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I mean, they were keyed on that bug. I mean, like it's all about the wiggle. I I probably put a hook in him at one point. I mean, he just wanted cicadas, man. Like, but so it took like an hour and a half because like, so Paco missed him one time, and then an actual cicada came down, and he crunched down on it, and yeah. then he wouldn't eat for like thirty minutes, right? So yeah, it's like you you have to get it within their like cycle of when they're ready to feed again. It's crazy. It's just right right place, right time. We also found him a bunch. Some of the slower water that had a bunch of brush, yeah, like up near the banks, mm -hmm. 
and even in like some of the current or right off of the current, they were sitting in that like those those drops, you know, those yeah. little buckets where there's a bunch of brush. And if you could just flick it over, uh, we got a bunch of eats in that. And I missed like everyone because it's just, they would get <laughs> stuck in the logs. I heard you missed a lot of fish. What's right. that about, dude? I yeah, <laughs> I was just I was just there in Father's Day. I was wanting my dad to get on fish, you know. Yeah, yeah. He's leaving for dad. Man. True. Dude, yeah. I was hitting the bank though. I was getting eats. Yeah. You know. Hey, that's all that matters. So Paco, since since we're kind of on the big bug topic, yeah. I think it'd be fun to talk about the contrast between out west fishing yeah. and out east fishing, because you spent all of last year. You went Montana State, yeah, right, in Bozeman, and uh, you got to really figure out a bunch of the stuff around there. Yeah, and, like do a bunch of western fishing. Yeah. So what has it been like for you coming back to east, like the east coast, and kind of your your viewpoint on the contrast between eat, like yeah. the fishing out there and the fishing back here. Yeah. I mean, water wise in terms of kind of the stuff I was fishing out there, kind of at least what I'm guiding, it couldn't be more different. Um, spend a lot of time on like kind of the major rivers in Bozeman, the Gallatin, the Madison, um, some on the Yellowstone, but, um, still, I mean, coming back to these creeks felt like home. Um, just kind of that dry drop rig can't beat it. Um, it was fun fishing out in Montana and I mean, kind of really figured it out kind of that like last three months of the semester. Now I'm back here. Classic. But yeah. Kind of in terms of like thinking about flies and stuff like that, there was some crossovers and stuff like that. But yeah, like we were saying, like, I mean, the big bugs, the heavier tip, it, um, it was nice to kind of be able to do that, but I mean, you can't get away with it here. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the coolest things about fishing out there was the scenery, but I mean, I mean, the Boone's pretty good looking too, um, but I mean those mounds and stuff like that. We were running up some creeks that just blew my mind. It's completely but, different though. I think yeah. that's what I realized because I thought that I would go out there and just be, you know, oh I'm never there coming back. Like, yeah. I don't ever want to fish in Appalachia. Like yeah. Montana's sick. Yeah. But I don't know, man. There's something about these small streams and just being there's so much overhang. There's so much growth. It's just the the you yeah. feel like you're in a, a rainforest almost. Yeah. But like right now, there's no rain. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> It'd be um, a rainforest right now. Yeah, well, right now. <laughs> yeah. Real time. But I think that's something that you get here that's so special that you maybe don't get yeah. as much out there is that just that tucked in, those really tight casts. So personal. You might yeah. be catching smaller fish most yeah. of the time, but it's it's all relative, right? Yeah. You're fishing a small creek that's like falling off of a mountain. Yeah. And happened to have trout in it. Like that's pretty wild. One yeah. of the cool things about at least our creeks, I mean – Growing up fishing them, I guess, helps, but they're much easier to pick apart, whereas I found, like, I was fishing pretty blind out in Montana. I like throwing the right stuff, but, I mean, like, those rivers are huge. I mean, being able to fish a creek that's got a pocket and you're like, all right, ledge there, drop there, it should be somewhere in here. Um, it's so nice kind of being able to do that again. Um, and, yeah, I was worried some of those big browns out there were going to kind of ruin this for me and couldn't have more fun doing spoon stuff again. Yeah. But... You, you've, been, you've been able to fish out there a little bit, right, Gene? Where? Colorado. Colorado, yeah, you were with me. <laughs> yeah. In Frisco. Yeah. A snake? We did the eagle. Eagle. Yeah. That was, I knew it was but a creature that was, that was some <laughs> kind. <laughs> 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 Not quite the snake. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Uh, um, but it wasn't really, it was pretty I similar. I mean, I caught a decent, I mean, there were decent fish in there. Yeah, Remember, and we've missed a couple, like, m big ones. They're similar yeah. to what? Because I feel like we was like small bugs, light tippet. Yeah. Pretty similar to here. Yeah. Oh, very similar fishing. But like Paco said, the the actual size of the streams. Yeah. I mean, it it's like going out and wading up the Watauga River out in Tennessee or the yeah. South Austin, right? It's just yeah. as wide as that in some sections, which North Carolinians aren't used to really. Yeah. <laughs> North Kakalaki. <laughs> Is it hard sometimes to, because I feel like some of these streams are these like off the road streams. Right, that yeah. are just like these look like these little trickles. Yeah, I mean they're beautiful when you get in there, but is it hard sometimes with clients? Like, do they have expectations that you're going to some crazy looking like Smoky Mountain, yeah, insane backdrop type of stream? Like, do you guys ever run into that with clients? Uh, you, you go. definitely kind of goes like probably both ways. I mean, like I I think we all kind of try and figure our people out in the shop in the morning. Um, but I mean, like if I can get that one person or like two people that are really down to go like rock hop and i'm serious i'll be like don't sue me but we can go fish something cool if, but like it, it's, it's <laughs> some hiking and maybe some sketchy stuff yeah um, slip in the don't sue disclaimer. me disclaimer <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but um 
Well, the reality of that, though, is there's a very small percentage of yeah. people we can take to actual really cool and tight wild streams <laughs> because your average, I don't know, I'd say 80, yeah. 90% of the people we take out in them every day they're they've never fly fished before which is awesome awesome concept you know we're we're getting them introduced to it and we can get them casting and setting but summertime like we said you can really the the, the most fish you're going to pull out is in a really compact like tight wild stream and if that's your niche this is the right time you need to yeah. be doing a trip with yeah. us now if you're if you're you know more interested in numbers right that's this you know october november on, on the delayed harvest stock is kind of where you want to be yeah. Um, so it's, it's a different type of local trip, summer versus fall yeah. right? and, and even spring. Yeah. They're all different, but this is summertime is definitely the, the hardest and most technical. And <laughs> if we go day by day, some days you can catch 20 trout and then the next day you catch two yeah. and work your ass off for those two. Yeah. And it doesn't pay off. So it's just very back and forth. Yeah. And that's one thing too, is, I mean, kind of talking about like the give and take on like what we're fishing, like. If someone wants to go beat up some fish, I mean, we can three fly rig, go beat up some deep water. I mean, just sit there forever. But I mean, if you get that guy that's Crazy. like, the fish are kind of, I mean, kind of an afterthought. And we like go in there and really have some fun and maybe get like eight fish on a dry fly. Yeah. Like if that's kind of what they're in for, they love it. And so it's just whatever. I mean, your people are digging, but. Mm hmm get some really really weird looks from people sometimes when you like you're fishing the old side of the road creek yeah yeah sometimes those are the best ones well yeah, yeah let's you, like, talk get about out that of the car That's... and they're like you sure we're here <laughs> like, hell yeah we're here welcome to boone <laughs> <laughs> yes sir i i've been blown away over the years um living up here just figuring out these little trickle streams that go along the roads yeah yep. that you know, go behind different uh, convenience stores or like go by like different buildings and you would, you just think, oh, it's just a little creek. There's yeah. nothing in there. But you, once you actually like get onto the river and you, you find these little deep, you know, cuts yeah. that are fish are holding in, yeah. those can sometimes be the best spots. And in, I mean, in Boone, we have like an infinite number of them. Like, I know Carson said the same thing. I mean, I think both of us spent our entire, like, high school just driving around trying to, like, figure out every little creek in town. Before I mean, we realized how expensive gas was. I, had a, I had a Prius. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's oh, not fair. Big time. This kid went from a Prius to, like, a decked-out FJ Cruiser <laughs> with a rod vault and everything like that. I would have kept the Prius, man. He was fishing out of a Prius with crossbars. Did the job, though. Yeah, I mean. You had me on gas. You had me on mobility for <laughs> sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, seriously, like, Carson was saying, I mean, like, people will stare at you like you're an idiot if you put them in some certain spots. But, I mean, like, you hook that first fish, I mean, they believe you. And, yep, like, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's fun. Yeah. And especially when you get out there, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not Montana. You yeah. don't have a crazy backdrop. Yeah. You might. Like, a lot of times you see grandfather in the background and yeah. shit. And, Whoa. But. Hot spot. <laughs> yeah, big hot spot. Oh, I blew it. <laughs> They're going to know all my spots now. <laughs> fishing Grandfather Mountain. But I mean, like, the flip side of that is it, like, highlights how healthy, like, our water is. Like, you go catch a fish behind blank, but, like, it's a business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, like, that's cool. There's fish there. That's so sick. But Have you all made any big breakthroughs in finding new water this year um, with – because I know as, like, guiding every day, especially locally yeah. – it's really, I mean, you have to find places yeah. to fish, right? Yeah. And there's infinite places to fish, but it's very easy to just go back to those spots that you know. <laughs> just break your... Dumping loop. Cut the wrong thread, <laughs> man. Well, oh, man. So, But it, my point being, um, like, what has it looked like this year for finding different new streams? And have you guys been surprised or found any, like, big breakthroughs with uh, new water this year? I, I think the biggest reason for her finding new new water and this is kind of a different subject but you know we're slowly still in a decline of public access right and there's there's streams now that I, you know i was fishing last year that i can't even fish now because someone's moved in and privatized it just because yeah. they don't want to see anyone standing out in their their water so it's forced us to kind of think think outside the box and uh and and go try some unique stuff or really areas that 
like we were saying that you wouldn't really think a fish would be in it probably is a trout sitting there and that, yeah. that's and it's probably going to fish good because no one else has thought of that or they just pass it every day like it's nothing yeah one of my most productive creeks i have ever fished in my whole life is like eight feet eight feet eight feet from the middle of the road okay. like a major yeah. highway yeah it is legitimately on the shoulder and there's tons and tons of trout in there and it I mean, it it fishes good because you know, like they said, it looks too dumb to yeah, have fish. Yeah. <laughs> like you'd look too much like a, a dummy to be standing there fly fishing on the side of the road. But yeah. you know, so then like when you hook one and a car goes by, you just gotta <laughs> kind of hit them with one of those. But yeah, like what we're getting at is if there's a creek in an area that you know you've caught trout before, you know, like Boone, there is trout in every single creek. At some point, you know, they might not be right there at the spillway <laughs> pumping sewage into the river. <clears throat> not through App State campus, I don't believe. <laughs> yeah, um, but there's there's trout in tiny, tiny, tiny creeks, you yeah. know, so. Yeah, why do you think so many people overlook water like that? I feel like all the time I hear from people that there's just those those couple spots here in Boone. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. Valley Cruces. Yeah. Or Todd. Or, like, why do you think people overlook a lot of these these little creeks um, that, like we've talked about, can have really yeah. good fish, or really good fishing. I feel like one thing, too, is, I mean, like, people feel like, I mean, you can read up, I mean, if we're talking about Valley Cruises, like, you can read a thousand, I mean, comments that people have caught fish there, and, I mean, maybe people think that's safe, but, I mean, you drive out there and you find the most pressured fish in the entire county. Like, I don't know how to continue this, but, like, kind of, I think, just playing around, um and just having the confidence to just, yeah, go do something. If there's not a fish, whatever. But um, Trial and error. And trial and error. And just, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I know in high school, yeah, I found a couple of creeks that, like, fished terribly. Um, but, I mean, that's Not we, since then. Every, every not since then. Yeah, never. never. <laughs> just big fish only, but. Prius days, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think on, I think what you're trying to say there is, if you're doing what everyone else is doing. Yeah, exactly. Then, I mean, it's. It, because it's safe, weird. right? Yeah. Like, it, oh, I know that people, like, there's all these forums. People at the fly shop talk about this or whatever. You know, yeah. I know there's fish there. That doesn't mean that's going to be, like, the most productive spots. Yeah. I think something, something I'm always trying to encourage people to do is really think outside the box, yeah. right? Like, for, for anything, not just fly fishing, for anything creatively or business-wise. Like, you know, all it all comes back to fly fishing. If you're going to do something that everyone else is doing. Yeah then it's you know you just got to think outside the box a little bit try like you said be weird like we did some weird stuff this week yeah. with the flies yeah try stuff that people maybe aren't trying yeah and uh you kind of give those fish a different look that they're not seeing every single day that was kind of yeah. the thing with uh with those cicadas it was like people were you know changing their flies like ripping the rubber legs off of them you know yeah. getting magic markers and doing stuff to them it was because the fish were used to it you know, it's like if you go up the creek and fish the same exact rig every single time, you're like, man, I've done so good here before. Like, what's wrong? It's like, well, <laughs> fish are probably used to it. They probably know what's up. I you know, you got to change your tactics. I see a lot of people in the industry, they, they find something that works and they stay there forever. And they don't change their ways. They don't change what they do, how they fish, how they guide, whatever it may be. And that can be a fatal flaw in fly fishing. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you can't be afraid of change. You can't be afraid to change up your tactics and, you know, call a huge audible, you know? Um, Because sometimes that can help you the most. You know, it can kill you if you just stick to the same old stuff because it's a changing game. Yep. Always, every single day. Yeah. So that's probably the part that I'm most drawn to. Yeah. It's like you can never really get it figured out. Yeah. Right? Like right when you figure something out, Boom, something changes. Yeah, you got to adjust. Yeah. You got to adapt. Or you learn something new about maybe where the fish are sitting or yeah. the river system changes. So many of these rivers have changed due to rain, due to drought, due to all these factors. Um, but that I think that is that is fly fishing. Though. Well, exactly. Right? Like exactly. that literally is fly fishing. That's the point yeah. of it. If it were like the, yeah, the people who come in are like, what's the fly right now? It's never that <clears> simple. And we can give you some recommendations of what might be going where, or, you know, fishing well, but it literally changes depending <coughs> on what creek you're fishing. Um, even, even the section of it, you can go up, you know, 200 yards on a, on a creek and it'll be, they'll be eating something completely different than yep. they were lower down. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
That's a great point. We saw that yesterday where yeah. we were fishing. Yeah. Kind of flat, you know, a bunch. And then at right when it started dropping, that's when we started finding the fish, you know, yep. those deeper pockets yeah. and everything. All right. We just took a quick quick bathroom break, but we're back. We're Flies are still sp- being spun. Paco took a dump. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, before we get into some of the other things, uh, you guys as like guiding, I think that there's probably a lot of people that are interested in guiding. I think that's a a, a big outlet to to really get into, say, like yeah. the fly fishing world industry. What would you guys say has been? Um, how have you enjoyed your experience of guiding? And what would you say to people who are trying to get into it? Yeah, you know, and and kind of kind of wanting to start, you know, dipping their toes. Um, my personal experiences with guiding, uh, it's kind of, it's a made me pre- appreciate, you know, I've caught my fair share of fish and I say we all have. So it's, it's, it's enlightening, I guess you could say, you know, the joy on people's face when they, they catch their first trout. And yeah. it's cool that we get to kind of teach them how and share that experience with them. It's kind of something that, you know, if you stick with it, you'll probably never forget it. Um, but it's, it's, like I said, it's, a, it, it's enlightening and it's really, you know, encouraging to, I guess, kind of be, I don't know. I don't know. Have like an influence on somebody. Yeah, I guess, you know, kind of showing them the ropes and then seeing it pay off. Right. When, yeah. when we start, that's the biggest thing for people is they, you know, I can teach you how to cast and set all day, but once we actually start pulling in some fish and you, you see the, you know, that once you're doing everything right and you see the reward of it, it's, it's almost <clears throat> addicting at that point. And it's, it's cool to see yeah. people's, the gears turn in people's heads, you know, yeah. when you open up this new door to fly fishing for them. You probably get some people that, because you, you guide a lot of people, you yeah. know, a lot of variety of types of people, yeah. but you probably get those people that really, like, get it. You know, yeah. like, they, you can tell, even if the fishing's not on, they just, like, they catch the bug. What's that like? Is that experience pretty cool? Uh, yeah, dude, it's so fun. I mean, like, at least on, like, my trips I've seen, like, you know, I'm talking to, like, the other angler, and you just see that, like, the other guy's just fishing hard as hell or like he's like cranking up the hole like not too fast but he's just he's fishing like and he's yeah. fishing for himself i mean that's super cool just seeing him get it mm-hmm. um and i mean the happy chaos that's hooking a big fish for the first time like could not be more exciting every yeah, time happy chaos yeah, yeah. Was just like the chaos of like the first fish yeah <laughs> people, break, people like hook a fish like ah! <laughs> <laughs> what do i do ah! what do i do <laughs> You're just like rip them in, get them in the net. And it's awesome. I mean, it's like it's an energy that you you really can't describe. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really 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 cool. And sharing and that I miss moment. it a horrible amount. This. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. These guys are making me jealous. Daydreaming in here in the shop now. Yeah, man, <laughs> got that shop life, man. Stop by. <laughs> but I guess going back to my initial question, for people who are trying to get into it, I think, I don't know. I just I feel like it's a. Uh, it is a saturated industry. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are wanting to do it, right? Yeah. I I kind of chose to do something a little bit different, but still like in the fly fishing kind of world and hemisphere and especially working with guides, you know, and working with the shop here. Yeah. But it's a competitive thing. Like you can't just walk into a fly shop nowadays and and just get a job. Yeah. Be like, oh, I, I fish. Uh, I, yeah. ca- I can catch fish. Look uh, at this. Like, can I hiring? be a guide? Yeah. So what, what would you say to someone that is maybe in that boat there? They want to you know pursue guiding but maybe like they don't know where to start it's good i mean kind of i mean how i ended up here is i mean this is a shop that's two minutes from my house and i mean like i was always in here bugging these dudes trying to figure out you know what's fishing or what's happening i mean i don't know if this is necessarily like the approach to take but i mean definitely like spend time in your fly shop like get close with the guys that really know your water you're gonna get really good at fishing i mean you probably end up being able to guide something like that um I mean, that's how I ended up here. So yeah, show them that you you just you support the shop. Yeah, don't just come in and stand there and be like, "Here's my resume. I fished in Colorado. I guided in Montana. I've done this, that, and the other." And yeah. you know, not I don't want to say not buy a single thing, but just brag about all the stuff. Just build a relationship with the guys. Yeah, there's no need to be nervous. There's no need to you know pull out all your fish pictures and be like, "Look how cool I am." I mean, like Paco said, yeah, he'd hang out here all the time to where it became like. He wasn't even like a customer coming in. It was just like, oh, what's up, bro? Yeah. You know? And yeah. here he is. You know? So don't, I don't want to say don't just push yourself really, really hard to, 
you know, shoving your application or your resume down fly shop. Don't bring in a resume yeah, to yeah, fly that, shop. Yeah. Don't do that. It's weird. What, what, what can help you on a resume yeah, through a, a fly point. shop? Right. Yeah. Resumes kind of make me like uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I think most shops, shop owners would probably agree that it's not, they're not so much looking for someone who can just catch fish. Exactly. Yeah. There's, I, there's plenty of people out here that can catch fish, but like, it's such a small, most, most guide services and outfitters around here, it's such a small group of people. Like we have, you know, seven, eight, maybe yeah. nine sometimes yep. total people. So, you know, you can be an amazing fly fisherman, but if you don't connect with any of us and we don't get a, we can't get along with you, you know, or, or, you know, it's, it's more, it's more connecting with the crew and seeing if that's where you fit in and whether, you know, we would, or I, I can't speak from due South, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's more just being, being able to, you know, connect with the guides and, and all the workers within that shop. Yeah. Is, I would say is key. Yeah. And there's, there's a very, very fine line touching on that. There's a fine line between being a good fisherman and a good guide. Yeah. yeah. There's pl- there's plenty of guys that I know in this industry and Boone and the Boone area and stuff like that where they don't care about guiding at all. Yeah. You know, it's like, "Hey man, you ever guide?" And like, "I have no interest." And those are some of the best anglers that I know. Yeah. I can tell you what, if you don't have patience, you they <laughs> don't even try. Like you yeah. will you will you'll quit day one. Yeah. It's definitely I want to say like it has to be the right person, but I want to say you have to have the right passion for fly fishing and how sure. you want to spread it. Yeah. If you just want to go out there by yourself and rip up a creek every day and, and catch them on your own, then that that's perfectly fine, you know. But you got to slow down, and like Shane said, you got to be patient. You got to realize that those people haven't casted a fly rod every single day for the past 10 years like we have, you know. So um, I can't stress patience enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patience. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. I mean, also kind of building off what Shane said, I mean, like, if you're going to go in and, like, talk to the guys that work in the shop, show off those people skills. I mean, we see, like, we yeah. meet new people every single morning. Yeah. Like, make sure that it's you kind show of kind of, yeah, like, yeah. whoever's, like, in your shop that, I mean, like, you can show these people, like, a fun time, like, even if the fishing's not what it hopefully would have been. The, mm-hmm. the fishing, the fishing's a, you know, catching fish is a bonus, but actually being able to teach people how to cast and and correctly set and bring in a, a trout as well as, you know, being able to maneuver up through a wild stream and, you know, just doing everything right. That's, that's kind of what's in the forefront of our mind. And then if we catch fish, we catch fish. But, yeah. you know, if the people who want to do a guided trip solely to catch numbers, that's, I mean, unless it's stocked DH, we don't have private water. We're all, you know, yeah. it's all public streams around yeah. here. You know, we can't call in the fish. So it's, yeah. Like I said, it's day by Can't day. Can't throw pellets into the water. Yeah, we don't have backpacks <laughs> full of pellets. Yeah. <laughs> Tell you that. I feel like the why Do South has thrived so much over the years has I, I really think is kind of like we've been talking about because of it's very much it feels like a family and feels mm-hmm. like a really yeah. close knit group of friends, yeah. but who also all work really hard. Yeah. You know, we're all working towards the same goal. Everyone has the same mindset. You know, it's not like the dude just showing up late, like you know stoned and like yeah. hung over from the last uh, night macy macy would fire you first time you did that yeah <laughs> yeah but I, I i think you know meshing with the the shop messing with meshing with the guys is like has been huge yeah um and it's very it's probably easy i mean it's it's easy to look like a hero as a guide but or you know if the if the fishing's like really on you yeah. look like a hero but yeah. i feel like to be really like to be a good guide is comes from those days when it's really slow Absolutely. Yeah. you have to step up and make that trip fun for yeah. the client even if the fishing's not there yeah and you have to be able to deal with kids and mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where you know you need twice as much patience yeah <laughs> but so yeah go ahead what would you guys say are some of the biggest things that you hear or the most like maybe asked questions or that you that you hear from people like kind of on a day-to-day basis whether it be in the shop or be on a trip um, and you know, kind of, what would you say to those? Talk about kind of keeping fish. A lot, of, a lot of people, you know, on on our guided trips, they uh, they want to try and keep trout. And I guess it's kind of spilling into a different subject. But um, we're we don't typically like to keep trout. I mean, what what is it you always say, Carson? It's like those are our coworkers. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's an industry standard. <laughs> trout are our coworkers. Like, yeah. it, as a fly as a fly fishing guide, 
mm-hmm. it's a really bad look. Yeah. Like if, you know, I work for a different outfitter and I look down and Shane catches this like really nice wild fish and just like reaches into his pack and just bonks it. Like <laughs> that's a, I'm going to judge him, yeah. you know, in that event. So well, it's, it's not even about the look. It's you should have enough respect to want to exactly. keep the health of the stream. You yeah. know, the fish are, you know, they, they keep a stream healthy and. Um, a lot of the stocked fish that are put in there, you know, stocked fish are meant to be kept and killed. But mm-hmm. if you catch a beautiful wild 20 inch, you know, brown or rainbow, most likely that's a, that's a breeder of the stream. So yeah. if you rip it out and kill it, whatever beautiful colors that fish has, he can't, you know, share that with other other yeah, fish. Exactly. That'll that Natural that producing fish. that genetic pool is gone. Yeah. So. So you keep ripping out, you know, wild fish, and eventually it'll be all just ugly stockers. Well, and the, I mean, we we're saying stockers are, they're not fertile. They're yeah. not going to be able right. to reproduce. They are put in the river sterile. I yeah. mean, there, but there's different situations. Like, you know, there's some, some places they'll put fingerlings in that, are, that can spawn, but it's like your classic stock trout in a delayed harvest water is going to be sterile, and it cannot spawn with the exact intention of it not messing up the wild trout population. Right. Because if you put a bunch of stalkers in there, they're going to ruin the gene pool. They're going to start, they're going to diminish the wild trout population. Mm -hmm. So if, you know, there's tons of anglers out there where they don't even want to go fishing if they can't keep fish. Like, what's the point if I can't bring home dinner? Mm -hmm. And, you know. That's not what we're, that's not what our trips are aimed towards. Exactly. We respect everybody's opinion. We respect every angler alike. Um, But we, personally, I just wish I could change people's view on it if that makes sense yeah. kind of touching on what shane said you know if you want to keep fish maybe go find a stock trout stream and, and keep those trout instead of a lot of times people have that mindset of oh my gosh i just caught this 20 inch wild fish this big old brown this big old speck i have to keep it i have to mount it right mm-hmm. instead of oh my god i just caught this fish i need to get it back in the water yeah mm-hmm. i need to keep them wet you know and, and let that fish spawn. And, you know, like Shane said, if that creek is super small, that's a, you know, essentially a brooder. Like that's a spawning breeder, fish. Really, a breeder, right? yeah, it's, like it's, a, it's a spawning fish. Yeah. And that could really put a hurt on the, on the population. Even if you go up through the creek and you don't catch a huge one, you just keep a bunch of wild fish, that's really going to hurt it. Yeah, man. And uh, make the summer fishing even harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I think that's why you guys as guides are so important because you're able to not you can tell someone that right yeah. but if you really get to have them experience the whole deal of catching a fish and like seeing that fish swim back i yeah. think that strikes a chord in them so much more than just saying oh don't keep fish yeah. yeah like you're a terrible person for keeping fish you know once you tell somebody like yeah i've done 17 guide trips in a row and you're like these fish are my co-workers if i keep them every single day what am i gonna catch anymore yeah. you know you it. guys had so much fun today. What am I going to put the next guys on? You know, no. and so it is. It's a real big. It's a respect what you have thing, mm-hmm. and it's a resource, and you got to respect it, and you have to nourish it, and you have to treat it correctly. Don't abuse it. I and there's a lot of that enough. there's a lot of abuse around here. Is a sad thing, and all, uh, a lot of these small towns with great streams mm-hmm. just get picked clean. Um, yeah. And some people, you know, some people do survive off of it. And if that, if you're that person, great. Yeah. then by all means, you know, that's, that's for you and I'm, I'm all for it. But if, if you're just, you know, pulling out your daily limit every day and not even eating all of it or just not doing anything beneficial with it, just keeping them to keep them, you're, you're kind of what's, what's wrong with Boone right now Yeah, in our and fishing. A huge thing that doesn't help that we barely touched on it. And this has been talked about like for the history of wildfly, but <laughs> It's just the public water issue. Yeah. And, like, a great way that I like to put it, we are a public water guide service, like Shane said. Mm-hmm. So it's like if there was this much public water 10 years ago and everybody could spread out on it and have a great time, now there's this much. Mm-hmm. And everybody has to hammer those four wild streams or those five wild streams because the a lot of pressure. Because it's dying because yeah. there's nowhere else to go. And then corona mm-hmm. happened. And everybody and their brothers are fly fishermen now, which is awesome. Like, we want people in the industry, but it's like, it's kind of, you're pulling up to your spots, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I have really never seen somebody here before. Like, I've found myself feeling like that lately. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And so 
those wild streams, you got to treat them well. You can't fish them every single day. Maybe that day, stay in and tie flies or stay in and drink a beer and watch TV instead of going up there and fishing for those fish. Or just fish a different section. Exactly. Or that you fish for the past four or five days. Yeah. You know, you got to rest them, especially going out into the summer. Trout are kind of sissies. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I think to that point, it stresses the importance of constantly – exploring and trying to f- trying to figure out where different spots can be and where you can find new fish because there's less access and there's more people hitting those those streams right yeah. Yeah. and so you want to be able to have all these different streams in your arsenal you know but how i we, we kind of were just we're talking on uh Did you guys turn the heat on <laughs> dude, dude it's I'm usually so it's usually hot. so cold in here Sorry. but we we were just kind of talking about um like off of the talking about you know protecting fish and um, you know you're you know really really respecting your local mm-hmm. fisheries. Um, there was actually a situation that actually just happened a couple of days ago. Um, Oof. That that would be would be interesting to talk about. If any of you guys have been on Instagram, you, you you're probably familiar with um, it's called Black Tip. Is it H? 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 Yeah, Black Tip H. It's a YouTube which channel. yeah, you want to explain the situation and kind of who they are and the yeah so. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is literally something that just happened like a day or two ago. Um, but there's a, a guy who runs this YouTube channel that goes by the name of Black Tip H. His name's Josh Jorgensen, I believe. Um, and he's just kind of a big game fisherman. Granted, he's not a fly fisherman, but he's an angler, right? So his YouTube channel, YouTube channel, it's kind of centered around going out and catching these huge fish. You know, hence his name, Black Tip. Um, he loves catching black tip sharks, kind of just the biggest, toothiest critter he can get his hands on, right? And his videos are real cool. I mean, it's pretty cool to see some of those giant fish. Um, But, you know, he has kind of gotten in trouble in the past, kind of the do it for the gram instead of respecting the fishery. Um, And so a couple days ago, I believe he was down in um, Columbia, I believe we we saw. And he, him and his crew, these guys here with, they caught a potential world record tarpon. Um... Again, not on fly or anything like that. Truly, I don't really care what it was caught on. The fish was enormous. And uh, I believe it was over 200 pounds. So long story short, tarpon are very, very, very protected fish um, in the state of Florida. Very protected fish, honestly, no matter where you are. Um, You know, you're not supposed to really take them out of the water. You are supposed to keep them wet. Um, and, you know, take the fly out while they're still on the side of the boat, stuff like that, and, and make sure that they swim away okay and make sure that they live. Mm-hmm. So, essentially, this black tip H guy is down there fishing, and they post a picture of this enormous tarpon that they have all the way out of the water, laying across three dudes, and they're, like, hoisting it up. There's some blood on it, stuff like that. Essentially, that enormous world record fish was pulled all the way out of the water, incredibly incredibly stressed out by it um and it was really harmful to the fish it's gotta be an old fish too yeah and it wasn't just any tarpon you know it wasn't a 30 40 50 pounder it was a 200 plus pound fish he probably didn't recover too quickly and reviving tarpon you know you see those big you know guides in the keys and stuff those fish that are getting towards 100 pounds they've got to run them on the side of the boat and idle the boat in the current to revive those fish from fighting so long yeah i can't imagine how long that thing fought and so essentially they just took it all the way out of the water for the gram for the picture you know i mean it probably would have been tough because that's a world record fish so you want to get some good shots of it but he definitely should have been smarter with it definitely should have kept it in the water and he's getting i mean honestly i kind of think his career's over from it He's getting yeah. a lot of hate from the industry the, because of that. There's been a lot of backlash yeah. on on social media and like kind of the fly fishing world, just yeah. the fishing world in general. Right. I mean, Sports so. Center was posting about it, um, just like like promoting it. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think I think it's it's yeah, it's a pretty controversial thing because it's something that we see. I feel like in the trout world a lot on the day to day basis of like the whole um, kind of doing things for likes doing things for social media doing things for like engagement right yeah and i think you can see kind of the the dangers of that yep. through this situation yeah just but and those of you that want to compare like oh well do south you know or fly fishermen hold trout up it's 
very completely different scales. Yeah. Yeah. Even when we do hold them up and we have a whole wall of pictures right there, you know, it's, it's, it's great to hold them out and we, we do our best to get a quick picture, but we also will any fish of size, you'll see any one of our guides taken however, really however long it takes to fully revive that fish and have them kick away strong. You know, yeah. it's not just, oh, he's good. He'll, he'll yeah. be all right. You know, if any 20 plus inch fish we catch, I mean, it's what, five minutes at least. Yeah. You're just yeah. sitting there, just head pointed upstream, getting oxygen, you know, reviving them. Or so, it's, or it's, you know, sometimes you just, you don't even get a picture and you're just yeah. keeping exactly. it in the net, yeah. release but it. But it's, and it's respecting those fish though. And that's, yeah, he kind of did the opposite of that there. And it, and yeah, like Shane said, it's it's hard to compare a trout to a tarpon. Yeah, you know, but still, it just mm. yeah. But I mean, like that's kind of the cool thing about our job is we have the power to like create those good habits and stuff like that. So I mean, like yeah, like you want to get a picture with the fish, but if you like drop it and like you know that fish needs to get back, like I'll tell the kid like, nice fish, dude. But we got to put him back. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I think that can go a long way with the right person. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I hope that. Yeah, it's pretty. It's kind of a, I don't know. I feel like a channel like that. I, I really don't watch the guy's videos. I haven't seen much. I, I think I've kind of heard of him, but I think it's. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of. It, it worries me a little bit because, with you know, especially something I'm doing, which is YouTube, right? Yeah. That's what my business functions on. Um, y- the YouTube algorithm, right, kind of craves these. Uh, big exotic looking you know things that are going to grab yeah. your attention right that people would call clickbait yep. yeah. and that's what drives your business right that's what gets you clicks that's what people engage on and the more engagement you can get like the sky's the limit really yeah. you know yeah. and especially for youtube so i think the day da- it worries me a little bit that a lot of people are getting into fishing not just fly fishing but yep. fishing because they're seeing it as like an opportunity to uh monetize they're like oh i can get i can become big i can become famous so to say yeah and uh i don't think that they have a, sometimes people can maybe miss that kind of uh stewardist <coughs> you know or steward part of it you know yeah. respecting and like really understanding what they're doing and why they're doing it and how to protect that yeah. fish uh, instead of just oh this is going to get me clicks on instagram this is going to get me likes on youtube but mm-hmm. what do you what do you guys like kind of think about this this issue in the i'm not really an issue but it's something that is inevitable in in the fly fishing world in the fishing world that's going to continue to grow is just more media coverage how do you think that's going to impact people and the fisheries that was a loaded question there yeah got it. go go <laughs> social media is horrible for the sport of fly fishing i mean the, it, the the that's my opinion on it and the direction that it's moving social media used to be you know people sharing their catches and sharing their stories and everything like look at this fish I caught or look at this you know the story I can tell about this fish and now to me it, it just seems very toxic yeah it just seems like people sit there and try to find something wrong with that picture or they try to find something wrong with this video or this story even if it's completely okay mm-hmm. you know um, it, it you know there's a lot of fly fishing Instagram pages and stuff that will get on you you know you'll people, the meme pages the meme pages <laughs> <Be careful. Yeah. laughs> And, you know, like you said, oh, YouTube, he, you know, we're putting everything out there. And people this is are, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like people are going to find something that, you know, they don't like or they don't agree with, and they will make it known, yeah. you know, instead of just like, wow, man, nice fish, great job, like stinks that you dropped it, but I hope it's, you know. But um, I can kind of see that, you know, it's kind of toxic in a sense, but, you know, it's a really good thing as well because you right. know you get to network with people and meet new people and new like-minded individuals. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm able to do what I am doing because of social media. Exactly. You know, so that's the other side of it. Yeah. It's it's very tough thing. Like fly fishing has grown tremendously. <coughs> the sport itself, to uh, in especially in the last year with COVID, people want to get yep. outside, yep. and a lot of that is, social media <coughs> is to is to credit. You know, huge yeah. growth in fly fishing. From so I think there's this it's like what i'm saying is it's inevitable that it's not going away right people are going to continue to uh you know continue to get into the sport continue to see it as an opportunity for Mm -hmm. monetizing for oh i can be grow a brand this and that Uh, so what do you think is something that people like i don't know what i'm trying to say but like how can people utilize it in a good good fashion but also be very respectful 
and uh, understand the toxicities of it and the dangers that it, that can be with, with uh, social media. I th- I think it'd be cool to see people rather than just seeing this massive fish you're holding up show like a post a video and record like you taking care of it and releasing it and watching it really kick away and yeah. seeing that fish like yep. carry on. Uh, yeah. I think that'd be really cool. Good yeah. good viewpoint from it. At it's least. a different look at it. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. Just to me, it seems like people want to find something to call out. You know they, I mean you know going back to the whole you know black tip h thing he had every right to get called out i mean that was what happened there that was going to get called out no matter what and talked about yeah um but like for example like the whole kind of like fish handling thing sometimes you know for example like a social media page will repost somebody mishandling a fish you know maybe they took a picture of it by setting it on the ground and taking a picture of it and that's bad for the fish's slime a lot of times, if you look a little bit further into it, it's like those people really don't know what they're doing. They don't know that they did wrong. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know that they didn't hold the trout perfectly. <clears throat> they didn't know to use rubber in their net instead of mesh. Um, and so it bothers me sometimes where, you know, people haven't been taught how to handle a fish. And then they, they post their awesome catch on social media and then they just get tarnished yeah, for it. Lipping a trout a like thing. a bass. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I mean, that's something that I like to do on guided trips. And sometimes people are like super stoked on it. They're super excited. Like, I'm like, hey, this is how you want to hold the trout. You don't, it's not a banana, you know, scoop your hand in the water first before you touch them. And sometimes people are really, you know, interested in that. Like, wow, I didn't know slime on a fish was so important. Yeah. And so, you know, instead of hating on somebody, maybe be like, instead of, hey man, hold the fish right. Be like, hey, you know, do you know to wet your hands and stuff like that? And a lot of times people, they just don't know. So instead of hating, help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think there's, I don't like, I don't know, it's just, it's very easy behind a screen to, yeah. to, to say keyboard whatever warriors, you want. Keyboard warriors, baby. Absolutely. Yeah, keyboard warriors. And I think, um, I think, like, this guy, Black Tip, it sounds, like, he, he very well, like, he is. He does it for the gram. He's an avid angler. Ten times out of ten. This guy has a I huge platform. He should know better to, than to, like, promote something like this. But I think, um. I think there's a better approach to it on social media. A lot, a lot of these, even sometimes the meme pages, they're funny, but sometimes they can just go at Too people, far, yeah. and not just them, but like just people in general will just go really hard onto somebody, and they might be completely innocent. And yeah. so I think there's a better way to go about it. I think shame, like people shame these people on, on like their public posts. Like I think it's much a much more appropriate thing to maybe directly message the guy, hey, yeah. just wanted to yeah. heads up, yeah. like. You're doing this wrong, like the, yeah. you know you're supposed to do it this way. I think if we can promote more of that, I think social media can be seen more as a um, positive thing. Because people and, don't know. Yeah, it's it's all about the space you create, right? Yep. And um, if you're creating a space for toxicity and you want to just stir up drama, yeah, then that's what you're gonna get, mm-hmm. right? It's, but if you want to uh, to create like a community that educates, and that's like what I want to create with Wildfly and yeah. and Do South as well. It's like we want to promote. You know, y- you might do something wrong, but it's you want to promote it um, and help someone through it instead of just, be just bashing them, yep. shaming them. You know, just play your game, do your thing. If you're fishing something and it makes you happy, you know, don't yeah. listen to the haters, man. Yeah. yeah. If you like cats and stalkers, so be it. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> exactly. Who cares if that's what you like? Then don't let people change your mind, man. But if you like keeping and eating wild fish we'd like to just have a chat with you in yep. here yeah <laughs> bring, see if we could bring in your that. resume yeah. <laughs> bring in your <laughs> bring in your resume <laughs> just for shane <laughs> all right switch gears really quick uh i gotta throw this one at you guys i had this written down best fly fishing snacks oh. pizzeria combos pizzeria do we just get combos. one snacks snacks oh so mm. that was plural no i know <laughs> I like peach ring gummies, but I'm weird. So. Okay. I like those Doritos, the the, the purple ones, the spicy ones, the sweet, sweet, sweet chili. Sweet chili. Sweet chili. Dude, yeah. if we're going on the boat, Jeez. that has to be on my boat. Yeah. yeah. That and yep. a light beer. Yep. Yep. Not really into the IPAs nowadays. They're they're too heavy. Became mainstream, dude. Yeah. The millennial uh, <laughs> IPAs, man. <laughs> what else, man? Good fish and food. Like, I'm combo. Combos are die, but. I was going to say combos. Yeah. Yeah, combo pizza pizza combo. Ooh, I'm a big sunflower seed guy. Okay. I like, mm. Yeah, I like throwing in some seeds when I'm fishing. Um, 
Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it's kind of tough. See, I mean, I kind of think the fun of fishing is just, like, not being prepared food-wise yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah. So, like, when we wake up at, you know, the butt crack and on to go floating, it's just like, did you eat anything? No. Do you have caffeine? No. All right, let's go. Yeah. Let's <laughs> right. go to Bob's. Yeah. yeah. We're Bob's. stopping at... Uh, or you go yeah. hit the dairy land. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the local stops on the way to the river. True that. Or Bojangles. Yeah. Still local. Or Bojangles. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> But but I don't know if you, if There's a difference though between if you're gonna go wade somewhere cause yeah. and and you're gonna go float. Like float, dude, you can have a luxury time with Absolutely. your snacks. You, you have can. space. Charcuterie board, man. You, yeah. yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> Honestly, or uh, but when you're waiting, it's usually just like give me a Cliff Bar or yeah. like a Cliff Bar, kind Bar or something. Oh yeah, easy, easy stuff. And I'm good to yeah. go. High protein. Trail mix. Trail mix is fire. Can't That'll go do. wrong. Dude, some kid the other day gave me like four foot long Slim Jims. Nice. Yeah, it was kick. Yeah, sometimes clients bring food and that's cool. Yeah. You know, dude. They bring snacks for us. Yeah. Especially if it's homemade. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> yeah. Now, like, good moms on trips, moms of, like, big families, they're always going to come through. <laughs> yeah. Um, Boiled peanuts. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. That's a sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Never tried that. You've never had boiled peanuts? I've had boiled peanuts, not fishing. Ah. Dude. From we used to bring those on the had, boat. Have you had peanut patch Cajun boiled peanuts <laughs> out of the can? Ooh. Maybe not. Yeah. That'll there you change. Go. We're going fishing tomorrow, and then that will change. That'll change your life. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to rain tomorrow. <laughs> All right. I'm going to run through a couple questions that we got. We, we did a little IG question deal. You guys you guys sent us some sent us some questions on Instagram. So we're going to go through a couple of these, kind of like a speed round. I mean, a lot of these we've covered before, and if you guys have been following the podcast, we've covered a lot of these questions. So I'm going to try to avoid some of the repeats. But... Here we go. Um, Just going to line. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. No Trout <laughs> water temps in extreme heat. Question mark. Exclamation mark. When to fish and when to not. What is it? Like when it's above Ooh. 65, it's too hot? Or for, uh, If you're uncomfortable, so are the trout. Yeah. End of story. Yep. Like temperature wise. If you're like, oh my God, it's so hot outside. The fish yeah. feel the same exact way. So go home. Unless it's like a spring creek, and then it could be a little different. If there's shade and it's yeah. spring creek. If there's deep pockets, it's fine. Yeah. But I don't know. That's, well, we, that's what we were hitting on earlier with not fish in the middle of the day. Let, <coughs> give them a break. Like, it's summertime, it's, gonna, it's warm no matter what, and it's slow no matter what. So really utilizing, um, you know, the, the early morning cool temperatures and as well as late evening kind of, you know, lowering temperatures is is where you want it's really just being smart about the timing of the day right yeah yep. don't go out there with the temperature gauge and try and see what the temperature is and see if whether you can fish it's not that precise but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah if you're uncomfortable if it's too warm yeah and you need to just yep. you can't even wear waders and get yeah, out it's of like there. you got to be so quick with a fish because it's like they will die yeah like wild trout stock trout alike i mean they, stalkers will really die but like wild <laughs> fish <laughs> yeah they will like fight to exhaustion because i mean they 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 don't eat much you know they're just they're hot they're sitting there they're tired so it's like when you hook him and you take a ton of pictures with him and you drop him three times and everything like that fish sometimes will die in the summertime mm-hmm. so if you're gonna fish in the heat of the day and you catch fish just be super quick with them like yeah and 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 yeah or just wait until the really really late evening yeah mm-hmm. so nice and then what are some resources to use uh besides google maps um to find streams online i mean that north carolina interactive trout maps a pretty awesome one but the state sites dude i'm yeah. telling you we like yeah it's north carolina state site yeah. All your state sites should have something. If you have fish or like trout in your area, they should have something. And that does get updated, sadly. Me and Carson they got. Ju- yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude. We got pretty upset because they put some juicy stuff on there for <laughs> yeah, this they, year. Yeah. They put some like nice creeks on there that like were not on yeah. there in the past. I about wrote a letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another thing, folks. Even if you go into a state site and a creek doesn't isn't marked or doesn't say that there's trout in there, that does not mean that you can't fish it, and it does not mean there's not trout in there. It might be killer. Yeah, might be killer. I don't Enough know. Said. I've found that's such a tough question. Like, how do I find spots? Like Google Maps, this that, and the other. I find trout streams <laughs> when I am not fishing. Yeah. So, like, you know, if I'm, you know, on a not a family vacation or literally just not fishing, I'll be driving out somewhere. And it's like, whoa, that looks pretty nice. Mental yeah. note. You know, that's how I found some of my best creeks. One time, I got lost out in the country driving my friend to a wedding. 
and I found a really cool creek and then went and got my stuff and came back and fished it and it was awesome. So yeah. just looking at a map around here doesn't always work when it comes to like private and yeah. public yeah. access. You really have to go out there and actually look yourself because there's a lot of privatization around here that's not it's not exactly like PC in the sense of they didn't go through the proper orders to actually privatize it, mm -hmm. but that land is posted. So regardless, you kind of got to, you know, stay away from it or, or yeah. you know, go around it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to get there and like see what it's like. Exactly. Yeah. You guys have the luxury, of obviously, of being here. <laughs> um, you should have kept the Prius as like a scouting car. <sighs> yeah, yeah, dude. You know, the FJ, the guy. Especially car. during that gas crisis. Yes, sir. Oh, that would have been tight. <laughs> All right, so this next one is um, kind of a situational deal. He sent me this direct through direct message. And he said, okay, so he said, it's around lunchtime and you're fishing a run that you should be holding, that should be holding a fish. First cast and what appears to be a trophy for this stream blows up your nymph and breaks you off for, after a quick hook set. You decide to give the fish some time to cool down so you so you eat your lunch and you wait 20, 15 to 20 minutes do you use the same pattern so I set up the fish took initially change to a different fly change or to a different but similar looking fly or do you do something different and come back uh, a few hours later yeah well me personally i would stick with the same fly that he nailed but also i wouldn't be there out there at noon in the summertime right yeah <laughs> yeah it depends that's like where you are though. right so picking a better time of the day but i'd say i would start with that same one he nailed if you gave it a you know clear amount of time for him to kind of chill out and see if he hates it again before changing yeah i'd say like, the same if you're fishing like dry flies and stuff that's like pretty much like an exact representation of a bug like if he breaks off on you know, like a sulfur dry, like, and he's eating sulfurs. Yeah, throw another sulfur dry at him. But like, Absolutely. if you're fishing, like, you know, like a big DH jig heavy thing that's like funky, like some similar, but maybe not the exact same fly. Like, yeah, he said an So yeah, um, if you so there's a big thing with poking them. Yeah. If you miss a fish, if he the trophy of the creek slams it, but you don't feel him at all, he he'll probably eat it again. Um, that's very yeah, a few. But if you hook him and break him off and give him a nice lip piercing, he's going to be done for a while. Yeah, exactly. um, most likely. Yeah. It's not always. It's not that exact, right? But yeah. Most mm -hmm. likely, kind of once you poke him, they're going to kind of lay low and kind of ignore a lot of stuff. But if you go home, eat a sandwich, drink a beer, come back, I would, I would say to get the fish to eat, stick with your your um i guess you could say your fixed variables right so don't change your depth if that fish ate at you know 12 inches under your indicator keep it like that you know because that's where he was feeding and that's where he ate if he ate on 6x fluorocarbon keep it on 6x fluorocarbon you know keep your your fixed stuff now like paco said that was a great thing if he ate a say a midge profile fly say he ate a brown midge maybe when you go back put on a black one or maybe a purple one or if it ate a soft tackle fly maybe a different color soft tackle fly because that's the profile bug that he's looking for but he might eat the same one again but a lot of times trout want something a little bit different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it never hurts to try that same rig since it's already set up yeah. after your lunch at noon <laughs> yeah everything's <laughs> yeah. everything's different yeah. you know sometimes you slack it right back on him and he eats it so. yeah and I, I feel like maybe <laughs> here compared to out west this like a fish because it is a little more tight quarters and the fish are a little more spooky because yeah. you can easily walk up on them like yeah. there's not as much room for them to hang out right yeah so they're more vulnerable so i think fish here are a little more weary to hit again then maybe say something out west it's a little bit bigger water or yeah. maybe a tailwater fish so i think if if it's kind of situational based on your fishery yeah right you might you might be a huge hole yeah and you're fishing this you know really deep rig in colorado yeah but they might be completely different for you here yeah having kind of touching on on you know our wild streams and whenever i like if i miss a fish and it you know blows up really hard if you fish a lot of wild streams around here, you'll notice that they'll really, they'll only give you what well, one they're going to hit in either the first two to three casts. And also they'll only give you one, maybe two tops chances, right? So if you miss a fish two times in a wild stream, 
Mm-hmm. You you can throw at him for six hours and he won't eat it again. Yeah. Right? You just need to once you miss one in a in a spot, keep on moving. Sucks, but and that's something note you, it and go fishing next yeah. time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's really important for yes. the wild streams around here is yeah. fish quick. Don't yeah. get hung up. People <laughs> spend too much. I did. I do it frequently too. But like yeah. people spend way too much time fishing a hole. Yeah. When it's like fish, especially here because there's not as much room like the the hole is pretty small right yeah. give it a couple good casts if the fish doesn't eat you don't need to like switch your flies a bunch no i'm i'm all into like sticking with it like yeah. sticking with what i'm using until it's just really not working but like fish quick yeah fish quick and uh you're gonna cover more water yeah you see more water yeah you're gonna get a better workout yeah the day. come on now yeah Test the legs a little bit. <laughs> that's what they, ACL. If you see a giant fish on a creek, like there's probably only so many holes he can sit in. And so like, I mean, maybe just put it in the back of your mind that you'll come back. I mean, like I know a bunch of guys that streamer fish like, yeah, move this fish off that log. I'm going to go get him next week. Like, and mm-hmm. that's a really like strong mental attitude about that. But I mean, like, yeah, just, I mean, maybe that's a positive way to look at it. But if anything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. He's probably can't go much farther. Exactly. And the wild fish are a little smarter than your stocked fish. Like, that's why stock fish, you can, it's like fish in a barrel, right? You can catch them over and over and over again. But yeah. your wild fish, they're, after they see that, after they try and eat that fly and then see it two more times, about within a 10 second span, yeah. they're smart enough to just realize that someone's fishing at them. Or at least something's off and I'm not going to eat right now. Right. Yeah. So they're going to wait till it all gets pretty calm. Um, and to where they stop seeing that fly really so it's it's best to just keep it moving after you've missed one try the next hole yeah yeah and, the older and f- if yeah, you're yeah. setting correctly shouldn't be you, missing you guys around. had to correct me on that <laughs> like yeah. i'm setting to the side yeah. like, it seems like dude just set up and I'm like, okay <laughs> 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 and it worked, yeah. it worked. <laughs> but the older fish too like they're smarter the bigger yeah. fish in mm-hmm. the stream they're they've grown up in that yeah. creek so just think they're gonna be smarter than a stalker that's just thrown in they're like oh my god that's that's food Absolutely. <laughs> that's yeah. a mob fly i'll yeah. eat that <laughs> My and fun. with the intelligence of fish too, the, uh, like those big guys will sit in strategic holes. Like most of the time that you hook into a really decent wild brown out here, he's sitting in a hole where he can shoot under a log and break you off on him almost immediately. Yeah, there's so many. Like they're they're a lot more intelligent than you think. So sadly, yeah, sadly, <laughs> dude. <laughs> but that's part of it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Well, you remember that fish yesterday that I think Paco caught. But it was uh, remember that big boulder that was in the water, Shane. And I was like, I was filming, and I was like, there it is. Like it should be right there. Right? Oh, as soon as you said, there it is. I was like, because yeah. you cast it right in front of that rock. Yeah. I was like, he's got to be under that rock in front yeah. of it. And sure enough, boom, came up and ate your dry fly. It's yeah. like, I love when that happens because it only happens every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Calling the shots. Call the shot, baby. Shane's got a pretty nice shot call. I'm not gonna lie. He he calls him a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. So this next one is from uh, Dave Dempster's. Sorry, I haven't been. <laughs> giving credit to any of these questions guys but <laughs> appreciate you asking anyways so he asks what do you consider when deciding when to run a dry dropper versus a straight dry Ooh, I, oh, oh, that's actually a really complicated question i'd probably always start with that dry dropper mm-hmm. i mean that's fair that's kind of your insurance you've got that bottom fly if that fish is hanging low but i mean if i mean they're only touching that dry like they were yesterday yeah. i mean we chopped those droppers off and just had a blast i mean that keeps fishing easy but yesterday was a textbook example of when to yeah. switch it they yeah. wouldn't we we had like two three different rigs out and all of us you know had on a different dropper fishing through this creek trying different holes and we weren't getting a single hit on any of the different variations of drops but then you know the the stimulators and our, our dry flies were starting to pop off so we all just were like screw it Snipped. no, no yeah. point in keeping extra line down in the water to get yeah. hooked in a rock right just at that point make it make it easier for yourself yeah yeah totally but if you get one to two hits on a dropper the only i wouldn't even think about taking it off yeah mm-hmm. you know because that's where most of your fish are going to come 90 percent yeah. around here yeah, at around least. here i feel like another thing for summer is just like you don't have to fish the same streams like go that's the time to go experiment yeah. go yeah. fish for smallmouth yeah on some different streams go fish the tailwaters bigger Absolutely. water you know like there's there's always alternatives to you don't yeah. like just have to stick to small streams like in the winter if it's like you know brutal cold i'm gonna go fish something i feel pretty confident i can catch a fish in but i mean like in the summer dude i mean the worst thing that can happen is you spend a day on a creek without a fish yeah I mean, it's a good yeah. thing oh, no, in right. the summer yeah. you're like yeah. in the waders like yeah. in the water it's a beautiful day <laughs> yeah it's all right yeah <laughs> you might get dumped on with rain yeah. <laughs> today 
All right, I guess there's just a bunch of questions. This will be the last Instagram question, but what? Um, I, I each each of you guys go around. What yeah. is your favorite ideal uh, small stream rod and reel setup? Like oh, by oh, brand oh. or just like size? just like just How like deep just, are we going? Like, let's just say like <laughs> yeah. your favorites. Like when you go to a stream, what is not just rod and reel, but what is your setup? Yeah. Like, what's your favorite setup? You don't have to say brand names, yeah. but just say like, oh, like seven six, like yeah, four yeah, right, yeah. and then like dry drop. Like, yeah. well, let's go around and everyone just say their their favorite setup. How big of a creek though? Just shut up. Just small stream. Seven and a half foot three weight. Three four size reel on it. You know something that's gonna match the rod. <coughs> a normal you know weight forward floating fly line and a and a dry fly and a dropper. So seven and a half foot three weight for me. Boom. Seven and a half foot three way. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure how much it will be in the video, but I mean, for those that saw it, I mean, I had a crush on Scotty's Orvis super fine glass. I was fishing all week. Carbon. Or carbon. carbon. My bad. With the <laughs> Come on, Paco. Carbon. Little baby hatch reel on it. That's not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's nice, but it's not necessary. <laughs> Big fucking hatch that, reel. Actually, that's, that's really important. For people tuning in who don't have a seven and a half foot three weight, don't think that you need one to get, to fish yeah. a wild stream. Yeah. yeah. You and just I mean, have to be a lot more con, you know, conscious of where your flies are, figuring out you know strategic yeah. casting lanes where you're setting. and Because you, know, yeah. you have a lot more rod and, and, uh, and a lot more... Uh, length to screw up and like being in the shop at least like we get guys that come in here asking for like a five foot six rod and i mean like that might be fun and that might be absolutely hilarious when you hook like any fish but um <laughs> anything <laughs> i really don't feel that i've ever wanted to go much smaller than seven six kind of i mean like you got reach still um Se seven's fine yeah. but i think seven yeah. is pushing it right yeah so below seven foot uh, it's absolutely I mean, get a 10 car or something but yeah. like shane said he made a great point like if you're sitting here watching this like great the fishing <laughs> guides fish a seven and a half foot three weight i can't go now it's, yeah, it's not it's it not at all good. i mean i you just have to be better at casting with yeah. the long <laughs> yeah <laughs> you harder. just gotta be more careful you know you can you could probably fish a creek with a 10 footer if you really wanted to, but it's like a lot of times I'll fish a small creek with a nine footer just yeah. because that's what I have in my truck. Yeah. And it's perfectly fine. You know, absolutely. You're just going to throw it in the trees a couple more times <laughs> and that's about it. To yeah. Be honest. But you also do have the advantage of having a little bit of a reach. So if it's yeah. a little bit wider and you, you want to reach out to some of the holes. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. That can be deadly. Yeah. A shorter rod is just more user friendly. And you know? I would say like uh, on that mine would <laughs> I hate to say the same thing, but like yeah. seven and a half foot four weight. Yeah. Usually like a probably like a seven and a half foot liter. Yeah. And uh, maybe sometimes I'll sometimes I'll shorten it depending. Yeah. But yeah, liters big. Catching a like catching any fish on a little three four weight yeah. is so much fun, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. But okay, to be fair, you know we're trips. I don't necessarily know if you'd put yeah. anyone on your seven and a half foot three weight, right? Oh yeah. yeah That's like, uh to, so people think you know, listening to this thinking, oh I want to do a trip with, you know, Shane or Paco or Carson and they're gonna put me on their seven and a half foot three weight. Probably yeah. not. Because yeah. they're <laughs> nice rods, right? And they're super lightweight and, and they're very easy to break. But, you know, I still you know, even even trips we do and we go up wild streams, you like we said, you can still we teach people on nine yeah. foot rods. Yeah. It's just we really emphasize or you know we really stress the importance of like your casting lanes and you know high stick um nymphing rather than trying to you know mend, mend yeah. out and you know it's it's really just keeping your line high and tight and doing a lot of repetition really you know tight casts and being able to jerk those fish out it's a little more difficult fishing a, a smaller rod right that's yeah. why we that's why we like it too yeah like when you're fishing with a client <clears throat> they're new to it they've never fly fish you're not going to put them on this this rod that's oh, yeah. kind of hard to cast yeah. if you haven't done it very yeah. hard to cast yeah the shorter Completely the rod different. the harder it is to cast yeah, yeah. Completely different. yeah exactly if you hand someone a seven and a half foot through it and ask them to roll cast a dry fly it will not happen yeah but it'll go straight up and straight down yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then straight into a tree <laughs> yeah i'm definitely bringing mine out to montana later this month yeah dude that's gonna be epic <laughs> small stream hoppers i'm gonna throw it i'm just gonna like screw it but it's <laughs> like if you yeah. ever just like you're ever just losing the the feel of fly fishing you're like man i just don't know if i like it anymore yeah go Get fish a, a small go rod. fish a three weight <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah every fish is a blast yeah yeah, yeah. 
Just makes you laugh. Makes and you smile. We, we all fish. We were saying don't go below seven and a half or seven, really. Yeah. We do actually have a six foot three weight in the shop. Yeah. If anyone's interested in it's smaller. Really cool. Come and grab it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a floppy boy. I mean, you hook a 12 inch fish and you're going to be fielded yeah. in the cork. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Right. Which is cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that that's gonna wrap up the Instagram questions. But I, dude, I think this is good. We've we've covered a ton of stuff. It's been a ton of fun. Yeah. You guys spun up some bugs. <laughs> okay. What 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 do we got Spinach. working, boys? Like what, what 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 did we whip up today to let the people know? I'm uh, I won't get into specifics other than guideflies. So, yeah, guideflies. <laughs> um, no size sixteen hooks. And what what bead size beads are these? Those are two five. Two five beads, baby. Gold can't go wrong. Hell yeah. Well, you can. Sometimes they're not hitting gold. But <laughs> two five. It's a smaller bead, two a lighter fives. fly. Yeah. I mean, we're not lying. And then um, the rest of the fly, you know, is just a bunch of fly tying material. So yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Which you can see behind here. All right. It's all here. So Do I South mean, South has fly yeah. tying material. Yeah, try in case hard you're enough. curious. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it's right there. Paco, what the hell's going on yeah, over there? What do you got working? So, yeah, I'm working on my single hook uh, DH flies. Um, but <laughs> DH flies. <laughs> this, this is going to be a kind of extended deceiver, but just, I mean, kind of gray and pink, good colors. Yeah, Hopefully there's some fish. A little rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do stalkers rainbow. like those? Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. That's what they're for. Yeah. 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 Of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> Just high stick them. And then he's dries, dry guy. Over. I'm still telling dry flies. Because <laughs> I'm an old man, and I love dry fly fishing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Well, before we wrap this up, I want to ask you guys, because um, I think I got this question, or I was kind of curious, but is being a guide long-term, do you think, and for you guys personally, Yeah. and if not – what uh, would you guys like to do next? It's a really good question. Yeah. That I don't want to answer. You don't look at me to start. You're the oldest. You got to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's uh, got you pinned there. <laughs> How do I say this without getting fired? <laughs> Dude, no, you know Macy's um, sitting there just waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> Macy's somehow live streaming the cameras in there. Um, I, can't, I can't say... I can see it being like, like actual long term. Like I, I think at some point in my life, I'm gonna get my patience will wear thin, right? To where I can't be teaching new people every single day. But while I have kind of like the drive for it, um, it's kind of right place, right time. I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, so I can tell you for at least the next handful of years, I'll be doing it. But I, I can't say. Uh, I can't say I'll I know for sure whether I'll continue to do it um you know long term or not. It's too early to yeah. kind of take it year by year and uh if it uh if we continue to lose, you know, public land, then yeah, it's we're going to see a decrease in guide service you know, guide services around here in general. So there may not be any choice if we keep going down the path we're going <coughs> with losing all this public land. Mm-hmm. And that I know that kind of it doesn't sound like an excuse, but like that's a serious thing that's going yeah. on. Yeah, it's a real big issue. Every year, every freaking year, there's somewhere that we all love to fish, and then it's like, oh, hey, by the way, it got ran out of this place today. Yep. What? New that's post never happened up, before. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's a really big thing that's going on. Yeah. So we're not just you know being lazy. <laughs> but it, it, it is sad to think that we could all lose our jobs in the future because we're literally just losing public access. Right. To the man. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the. Yeah. I don't think any of us know the exact solution for that. But yeah. I think like, if we can consistently, at least for now, keep it as a conversation sh- and share that yeah. with not only um, people online, but you guys sharing that every day to your your yeah. clients, so they can kind of just do your part. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Do your part. Exactly. It's another thing that people just don't know about. Yeah. Which it's, is okay. Exactly. You know. So. North. Yeah. It's just, and it's it's not all across. Like we almost need the Colorado law well, or is it montana so, yeah it's, yeah but did you hear about this year no yeah that like got pulled from what? montana, yeah. What? In montana? Yeah, the high water law is going to become a very different thing what yeah oh, oh. F- yeah. it's everywhere there now, was a couple now montana not... guides that were all over instagram dude yeah. i bet they're pissed oh that's yeah. gonna be so huge. it's gonna become kind of like king's law i think like north carolina 
Don't quote me on that, but dude, I, yeah. I saw a lot of stuff about it. I think Virginia has king flies. Yeah. The meme basically pages are going to go Basically, get your fly off. fishing in while you can, because yeah. uh, yeah. who knows what the future holds. <laughs> Everyone's going to see us and just run to Montana. Dude, bullshit. These politicians. <laughs> FBI yeah. is going to freak out. <laughs> well, I mean, that's been a thing, though. Yeah. Dang, oh, man. That's a bummer. Well, well go yeah, back. Just, wow. sorry. Get off this go topic. Back to the, go back to the question, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you think, Paco? Yeah, on a more optimistic note, I mean... So I'm a sophomore in college, so I definitely see myself probably sticking with this throughout college and then probably a year or two after, like, most of the guys at the shop. Um, at least in terms of enjoyment, it's definitely something I would hope I would just continue to enjoy as much as I do currently. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to, like, supporting myself, we'll see how it pans out, but <laughs> I'd love to do it for as long as I can. Yeah. <laughs> Better than working at, like... Hell yeah. Trick play or something like yeah. that. You know? It's a college job. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> there you go, dude. Um, Carson? Carson, fishing is life. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah. Will Carson ever leave Boone? No, <laughs> never. We'll never know. <laughs> ever. Um, I, to be completely and totally honest, I really can never see myself stopping, stopping yeah. guiding. Um, you know, I'll, I'll probably fish and guide until I can't anymore. So, I mean, I guess this is all she wrote. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, no, yeah, I, you know, the stereotype of Boone, everybody's, you know, done have to move to Raleigh or Charlotte or whatever. But, you know, a lot of people get real jobs, bigger jobs coming out of the guiding industry, coming out of college. Um, like Pago said, I'm going to see how I can support myself. Myself. And, um <laughs> And you know that being said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it until I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. So, and I don't I don't see that in the foreseeable future. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's really important to, like, what you guys are doing right now. Like Shane, you said, this is what feels right right now. Like, this yeah. Is what you yeah. Feel like you should be doing. Not sure if it's long term, but right. I'm I'm here in the present. You know, it yeah. feels right. And I don't know what I'm if I'm what I'm doing is gonna be long term. You yeah. know, but I think if you. What? <laughs> well, I, I, I know what like, I love to, you know, but you know what I'm saying like yeah. this what? like what I'm doing now might lead to another opportunity right yeah. that might still be along the, the, the line yeah. you guys might still be doing something in the outdoors in the fly yeah. fishing industry yeah. but it might not so to say be guiding right you know yeah. so I think like it's just really important to if it feels like what you're doing if it feels right and you, it feels like you should be doing it like yeah. you should do that mm -hmm. but if there's something like yeah, all your friends are moving to Charlotte after college. Like all my friends, like moving to Charlotte, moving to Raleigh, moving to Atlanta yeah. to get a job. Yeah. You know, like they're, they are a business degree. They get a job. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But if that doesn't feel right, if that doesn't feel like you should be doing that. Like Shane just graduated college. Yeah. He has a degree in construction management. Trapalachian baby. And he's guiding. So, you know? so like there's no, sh there should be no shame in that. Like, no, I mean, that's, you know, I've, I have a good backup plan. You know, yeah. I have a great degree and, and construction's booming. So I, I feel relatively secure if Macy gets tired of me and fires me tomorrow, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's the, I, r regardless, um, like I said, this is where I'm supposed to be right now. I, I know it. And, and my heart's, yeah. Heart's yeah. there, baby. And my heart's. <laughs> Sweet. Well, boys, thing. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, man. I appreciate y'all hopping on, tying some flies, and <laughs> hanging out this week. It's been a blast. Um, hopefully, you guys get to check out the video that we did. I think this will probably come out before the video is out. So, the video will be coming out very soon. And, uh, yeah, if you guys are in Boone or in the North Carolina area and ever want to stop by, come say hi to these guys. Come pick up some flies. And, you know, we love Beer. supporting your local shop. Yeah, man. I think it's, it's a unique, you know, relationship with your local outfitter yeah. and the more you get to visit different outfitters you kind of everyone has their own feel and their own their own style so i think it's really yep. cool to, to see that but yeah that's all she wrote for today boys and um hopefully we'll do this again again soon yeah. sounds good all right y'all have a good one appreciate a it we'll see ya.